Okay, and welcome to Econ 3150, Intermediate Macroeconomics, Sections 1 and 3. My name is Jeremy Chiquette, and I will be the instructor for this semester. Now, if you're wondering what the deal is with the music, I always like to have music at the beginning of any video lectures that I post up online, and, well, YouTube's all sorts of, you know, sue happy, and, well, not really sue happy, but, like, demonetizing and get you in trouble happy. So I decided just to bypass that uh, by not using someone else's music and instead just using my own. So that way they can't do anything to get me. But enough about that crap. Let's get on to the more important stuff that you actually care about for this course. Uh, so this course is entirely online. Um, we'll be discussing that in just a few minutes. Uh, let's first start with the book and just a short description of the course. So the book's written by me. Uh, it's going to be posted up on Canvas free of charge. It's a collection of notes I've made throughout my time teaching at Clemson. And it's going to cover some of the newer methods in macroeconomics in terms of the theoretical modeling and empirical approaches to the discipline. Uh, it's going to use some dynamic methods, meaning choices that we make today will impact what happens in the future. It also makes use of micro foundations, meaning we approach every single model through the lens of the existence of a utility maximizing household and a profit maximizing firm and we'll develop a general equilibrium that allows us to analyze how the aggregate economy is going to be responding to shocks. Office hours and lectures. Where is it? I guess it's up here. Okay, cool. Yay, office hours. So my office hours are going to be Tuesday, Thursday, 1.15 to 2.30. All the lectures will be online. They're going to be a combination of slideshow presentations and videos of me standing in front of a dry erase board doing like math type stuff on the board. They'll be posted twice a week. They'll run for about an hour and 15 minutes, give or take, depending on the material. Some lectures may go a little over, some might go a little under. I'm going to notify you via Canvas when the lectures are up, and you can watch them at your leisure once they are up. My office hours, like I said, Tuesday, Thursday, 1.15 to 2.30 p.m. I'm available for email throughout the day, so don't think like you just have to message me between 1.15 and 2.30. If you want to message me a little earlier or a little later, I should be able to get back to you by the end of that day within somewhat reasonable hours, meaning between when I go to sleep and wake up, which could be anywhere from, I don't know, 3 or 4 in the morning to, you know, 10 or 11 in the morning, something of that nature. But don't worry about it. You email me, I'll get back to you, no big deal. Um, I'm also going to be having some Zoom meetings for the entire class a couple of times throughout the semester where I'll be answering any questions that you might have. These will probably run about one to two hours. I'll walk through answers to certain problems, questions you might have, stuff like that. Um, and they're definitely going to be done a few days before I post every exam, which we'll be getting to in a moment. So let's talk about grading for a minute here. Everyone's favorite part. Mmm, -hmm, yippee. So, this is the grading scheme that you'll be facing in my course this semester. There's going to be two midterms exam, each at 25% of your grade. Uh, there will also be a comprehensive final exam where 35% of your grade. Every exam is going to have 110 total points graded out of 100. The exams will have 100 points of econ-related questions, and the remaining 10 points will be an extra credit chance for you, where I assign some movie, ask you to watch it on your own time, and answer questions on the exam with how it relates to economics, namely the topics that we've been discussing through that section of the course. They're going to be pretty fun movies. At least I think they're fun movies. You might not. Um, if you don't, then, well, I guess that's kind of a rip on me for assigning boring movies. Uh, but hopefully you haven't seen a lot of these movies before. So it's going to give you a chance to see some cool movies that you might not have been exposed to throughout the course of your life. And it's going to let you also learn to think outside the box when it comes to economics. Because I don't want to just hammer you with econ, just econ, 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 and not give you cool little examples, neat little twists that you can sort of use to apply what you've learned to other parts of life. Now... If this was a microeconomics course, that would be much easier to do. Unfortunately, with macro, it's a pretty uh, not applied field in terms of being able to apply it outside the scope of what you've learned. But I do the best I can with what I have. And as a macroeconomist, well, my options are somewhat scant. Now, the exams uh, are going to be posted. I'll let you know well in advance of when they're posted. You'll have one day to work through them and then submit them on Canvas 
by some predetermined time. You shouldn't have too much difficulty finishing them on time, but if you do, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to work with you. I can maybe extend a deadline. I can change when it's posted for you, something of that nature. I'll be willing to work with you. You just have to work with me. Let me know well in advance, or at least as far in advance as humanly possible, and we can try to figure something out from there. I've never once had an issue where a student was unable to get something into me on time and I didn't work with them and then just screwed them over or something like that. So don't think that that's going to be an issue here. Just work with me the best you can, I'll work with you the best I can, and we will try to get a favorable outcome for all involved. Now, the remaining 15% of your grade is gonna come from discussion posts that I put up on Canvas. Uh, you're gonna be expected to make two comments online each week. This is designed to give you a chance to be graded on some kind of classroom participation since this is an online course. Uh, these are probably going to start the week of August 31st. I'll be posting these threads on Canvas, and you just go through, post two comments. You can sort of comment back and forth amongst yourselves. Um, if it seems like later on you'd benefit more from starting your own posts, I'm more than willing to make that an option in the future. But for the time being, let's just see how this goes. Now, you got to post two comments each week. If you post one, you get half credit. If you post none, well, you get no credit. These have to be done each week, and you can't make up for lost comments by posting all of them in the last few weeks of the semester. Like, that's not going to cut it for me. If you post three comments, then you get credit for two comments. If you post five comments, you get credit for, well, two comments. Um, I'm going to be also assigning some problem sets uh, that are entirely optional. I'll be posting the answers a couple days, maybe a week at most, after the problem set's been put up online, uh, you can work through them to see why the answer was what it was, and hopefully by me providing you the answers after giving you a little bit of time to work on it on your own, that will sort of help guide your thinking with the way some of these questions are asked and meant to be answered. Um, so there will be full explanations attached to the answer key, but I would highly recommend that you work on these on your own prior to getting the answer key. So that way, when the exam rolls around, you have a little bit of practice trying to think through this stuff. If you just rely solely on the answer keys, rather than trying to work on the stuff on your own, you will definitely run out of time on some of these questions for the exam. So, course structure. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yay. Course structure. Okay. So there are two main areas of research in macroeconomics. There is growth and development, and then we have business cycle macro. We're going to start with growth and development. That's some of the slowest moving data that exists for macro. Um, so we'll talk about some of this stuff. We'll start with very low frequency data, sort of get a good understanding of the modeling, what the modeling's telling us, all that, and then we will move up from there in frequency to business cycle macro. Now, with growth and development, which we'll be starting with, uh, we're going to get into a couple of models involving growth and development. We'll be starting with a solo growth model, which is actually the only not micro-founded model that we'll be learning in this course. We're then going to learn a little bit about dynamic general equilibrium models applied to the neoclassical growth model, which takes the solo growth model and adds in some micro foundations. We'll be talking about endogenous growth and endogenous growth with human capital. Once we're done with that, we'll cut into business cycle macro. Now in business cycle macro, there are two main models that we're going to be looking at. There's the real business cycle model and the new Keynesian model. The real business cycle model came first. Uh, it developed some pretty interesting stuff in terms of the general equilibrium, and it gave some pretty interesting policy implications. However, some of these policy implications don't hold in many cases. Therefore, there was the development of the new Keynesian model, which came in and allowed for a little bit more policy intervention to actually have impact on the real economy. This is some stuff that we'll get into a little bit later. But we'll be going through these two classes of models, and then, should time permit, we'll be covering the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008, 
and I'll talk about what some of the policy responses were. And also, given the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I might try to get into a little bit of that as well and talk about what both the real business cycle and new Keynesian models would predict for certain responses to these economic shocks that line up with COVID-19. So with all of that out of the way, uh, last thing I want to say, academic integrity. Really matters to me. Uh, it's simple. Don't cheat. Um, you'll have to do the exams on your own. Uh, don't discuss them. Don't discuss what's going on the, like with these exams with other students in the class. You have to do it on your own. Uh, do not talk about what you're doing, what you're answering, how you're answering, etc. with other students while you're taking the exam. Once the exam's been turned in, feel free to talk about it all you want, but it's simple. Just don't cheat. If you don't cheat, we don't have a problem. Um, please don't cheat. Is I really don't want to be that guy that has to handle this stuff. So don't force my hand. And um, yeah, other than that, this should be a really fun class. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited to be able to teach this for you guys. Uh, this is going to be a really, really, really interesting course. I hope you enjoy the book. Uh, you should have access to the book rather shortly. Uh, feel free to start reading it. I will be posting in an email what sections we'll be covering starting next week. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of this semester. So have a great weekend or a great next day whenever you watch this. I don't want to presume that you're watching it on Friday, April 21st uh, when I made it. So just have a great couple of days until the next lecture. So thanks. Bye.